everybody, it's Gabe from Light to Science. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to build a 150 watt coil. 150 watts of coil. Yes. And also in this video, at some point I wear a hat. So today I'm gonna to teach you a 150 watt coil build that uses nichro, stainless steel, and cathol, all working together for the greater good of the most satisfying flavor and vapor production I have had in a build in a very, very long time. To achieve that sweet, sweet 150 watts, we are going to be using the Vupu Drag. Now the Vupu Drag got sent on free for the purpose of review from Fastech, so thank you very much Fastech. And I was originally planning on having this be one giant video where I do a full product review and a coil build, but due to time constraints, I'm gonna have to break it up into two videos. So we're gonna build on this today, and then we're going to do a full review, all the ins and outs of the Vupu Drag on the Wednesday review program. Also, we're going to be revisiting a juice I tried a couple weeks ago on the show. Uh, this is Black Ops by our friends over at Budget Vapors. I have a 15% off promo code for this juice, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go back in time real quick to where I was wearing a hat, and I didn't just speed drive drink three cups of coffee uh, so I'll, I'll teach you I'll teach you how to build it let's let's do a little let's do a little time traveling Go over to budgetvapors.com to get some of my most favorite flavors in the entire industry for 15% off using my promo code GABESENTYA. When you use my promo code over on Budget Vapors, you can get 120 milliliters of premium e-liquid for just $8.49. Also available on budgetvapors.com is my juice line. The Light Designs liquid line is available in 60 and 120 milliliter bottles. Both my juice line and the many, many delicious Delicious budget vapors flavors are developed in a high quality lab down in Florida. When you pick up my juice line or use my promo code, it really helps keep the Light Designs program going. So thank you all so much for helping support the channel. I really appreciate it. So what you need for wire for this coil, I am going to be grabbing two strands of 28 gauge nichrome, two strands of 28 gauge stainless steel. I'm going to be twisting together between 8 and 12 feet of 34 gauge nichrome and 34 gauge stainless steel. And then I'm going to be attaching that twisted wire to an empty spool so I can easily clap in it. Then I'm going to be paralleling it with 22 gauge canthal. That is a lot of wire. I'm gonna start things off here by straightening out two equal length strips of 28 gauge stainless steel and then doing the same for the nichrome. All right, cool. So I just straightened out a big piece of 28 gauge stainless steel uh, and then cut it in approximately half and then I am going to set these two pieces aside. Now I'm gonna do the same to the 28 gauge nichrome. So now I'm gonna take my 34 gauge and secure the 34 gauge nichrome and the 34 gauge stainless steel down onto something static. And what I mean by something static is something that doesn't move like a nail sticking out of your coil jig or a vise like I have over there. I'm gonna take both pieces of the 34 gauge and secure them down so they don't move and then walk back between 8 to 12 feet. Give myself around 8 to 12 feet of each wire and then I'm going to twist them together. I'd recommend 12 feet if this is your first time doing it. If you've done things like this before, around 8 feet should be enough for a dual coil. My camera angle isn't wide enough to capture me actually doing this process, but one thing you want to do is keep a, a, a fair amount of tension on the wire as it is twisting. It will want to jump rope around a little bit, so try to keep it nice and secure. Uh, but don't pull it too hard because you don't want it to snap. It is a higher gauge of wire, so it is very fragile, especially the nichrome portion of it because nichrome is brittle. Oh, before I do this, a big thing I forgot to mention is uh, make sure when you have your two strands of wire that they are cut evenly and they are both even lengths. Sorry, I know a lot of you guys like to follow along with the video, so make sure that these are cut even length before you uh, twist them together because you don't want one a little bit longer and then it will have a little extra slack than the other wire. So now you will have a giant piece 
of stainless steel and nichrome twisted together. So what we are going to do from here is we're going to clip off the end bits so it's nice and clean and you don't get stabbed in your fingers because that's a bummer. And uh, do that from both ends. Try not to have this tangle up on itself because that is really annoying to fix. Then what we're going to do is take a empty spool and attach it right here on the spool. And if you don't have an empty spool, don't worry about it. You can just lay the uh, this wire out behind you from where you're clapping and then just have it on the floor. But I like to clap in stuff off of the spool, so I'm going to be rewrapping this on to the spool. Pretty simple stuff. Take your time with this to make sure that it's all on there nicely and put a little bit of hand pressure into it so it kind of forms to the spool shape. Not very difficult at all. Now we have uh, around 10 feet of beautifully twisted higher gauge wire of two different wire types. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is take our two bits of nichrome and our two bits of stainless steel and bend L's into them so they can easily fit into the chuck of our drill. Cut them all to the same length and get them all lining up nicely. Now where you place them in the arrangement is it's, it's up to you. Uh, stainless steel has a lower internal resistance than nichrome. So if you want the outside portions of your quad core to heat up a little bit faster, then you could do that. If you want the inner portions of your quad core to heat up a little bit faster, you could do that or you could stagger them. Um, it, where you place these is not going to really affect the resistance, anything measurable. So it's kind of up to you. I'm gonna place my stainless steel in the center and have my nichrome on the outside. Not that it, it really it really doesn't matter too much, but if you want to look like a big shot and you know a lot about your coils, that's how you do it. Place all these guys evenly in the chuck of the drill. What I mean by that is I have one whole side, so two leads going out one tooth of the drill and two leads going out the other one. When you do this, you want to secure your drill down extra tight so it will hold each lead properly. Now you can uh, take a piece of uh, paper tape or medical tape and put it right here to keep all your leads nice and flat. You can add one of those jacket clips for your drawstring and that will hold everything nice. Or you could use one of these binder clip things. I've never actually used a binder clip for coils before, but it looks like it would potentially work. Personally, I've built so many quad core coils and, and multi-coil things that I am just going to just do it normally. Uh, so let's head over to the build area and uh, let's get this all attached and then we'll start clapping again. So how you would attach this is just like how you would attach any other higher gauge of wire. And oh, uh, before I forget, I did a tip that I didn't film, but I, it might be helpful to you guys. If you're working with multi-core wires and you wanna keep everything nice and flat and lined up when you attach it to your coil jig, what you can do is take your fingernail and press down like this, down the entire wire like that so when you attach it to your fishing swivel it'll be nice and flat and then you loop it in flat like this you can see right here on the bend everything is lined up how i want it we have a tiny bit of a bend right here but on the whole everything is lined up nice and flat so just take an extra second with some hand pressure in your thumbnail and uh, you can get everything to line up nicely we have our wire attached normally now i'm going to do a couple ugly wraps just as we normally would to kind of secure it down and then we just kind of clapped in away. Uh, when you have twisted clapped in wire, uh, you want to use a, a tiny bit extra hand pressure than you normally would to have this line up because when wire is twisted, it wants to twist over itself, not twist next to each other. So just use a little extra hand tension to have things line up. This is a coil that you can't back up. So if you make a mistake, you kind of just got to live with it or, or try to get it right a little bit further down the line. So take your time with it. Uh, you might want to put it in low if this is your first time doing it. So yeah, let's, let's do it.
not exactly the easiest coil to build, but it's not impossible. I'd recommend making a little bit extra wire just in case you make any mistakes. I've made a ton of mistakes building this build, but take your time with it. Uh, try different variations of different wire types and, and things that work for you. After dry firing it and getting my screws all dialed in and stuff, my build came out to a .06. So that's really, really low. That considered super sub-ohm. What what actually makes something super sub-ohm? Be safe with your equipment. Uh, treat your vapes and all your batteries and your clothes and stuff with respect. I always say to treat your vape kind of like power tools. Uh, if you treat it with respect, you'll be fine. And uh, just be careful with your stuff. So vapor production is... Uh it's pretty ridiculous on this one. I have this set to 150 watts with freshly charged batteries, and I am vaping on Black Ops by our friends over at Budget Vapors. It's a weird flavor, and I really wasn't super into it at first, but now I, I kind of, I, I'm digging it. I like it. I get it. Uh, Black Ops is a Thin Mint cookie with strawberry in it. It's, a, it's like a chocolate Thin Mint Girl Scout cookie with strawberry in there. And it's weird, it's a weird flavor, it's minty, it's chocolatey, it's really good. If you've never tried Black Ops and you wanna try something like weird but really good, uh, check that out and uh, there is a 15% off promo code in the description below. And when you purchase juice using my 15% off promo code, uh, we over here at Light Designs get a little bit of a kickback and uh, it really helps keep the production going. So thank you very much to Budget Vapors and thank you to everyone who picks up juice using the promo code. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Without further ado, 150 watts on the Vupu drag, these crazy super flavor but also cloud coils, best of both worlds, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Cheers everybody. That is awesome. I, I put way, way too much juice in here, but that was really good. Vapor production is great. This is a 70-30 and zero nicotine, and it's absolutely killing it cloud production-wise. It's not exactly a cloud-chasing juice, but I mean, as you can see, it's absolutely kicking it out. This build is ridiculous flavor-wise, because you have stainless steel, you have nichrome, and you have canthal. And canthal is very good at picking up the lower notes of flavor. Nichrome's really good at picking up the higher notes of flavor. And stainless steel is good at picking up the overall taste. So with all three of these working in conjunction together you get a flavor experience it's hard for me to describe in words what it is like because it's it's a flavor experience that I've never had in vaping before crossing the platform of all these different wire types is definitely something I recommend because it is very very good the Vupu Drag is phenomenal. This box is absolutely incredible. Like I said before, this got sent free for the purpose of review from Fast Tech. And you can pick this up for, I believe, $48 for the resin one and $40 for the carbon fiber one. Like I specified before, I'm going to be doing a in-depth review of it on the Wednesday program. But thank you to Fast Tech. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick this up. Uh, yeah killer absolutely awesome mod so yeah let's uh let's take a couple questions somebody asked what these sticky notes are always on my laptop these are sticky notes of television shows that I am uh, editing on this laptop so it's no like secret message so to start off the comment section here I want to give a huge shout out to Syod one two three four three four <laughs> Owen commented and said, I'm new to vaping and want to get an RDA. Can you explain how to build them, like what side to put the wires and where to get wire and what all the terminology is? Sayo so really got in there and uh, helped him out with the ins and outs. And I see that from time to time. Phil Lee does that a lot. And you, you guys in the comments, I really appreciate you guys getting in there and helping other people with their questions. I think that's really cool and it, you know, it makes it makes a really great community aspect and it makes the comment section a very inviting place. And I really appreciate that. I think that's awesome. Owen brings up a really good point here. I, I, I really 
really should make a beginner guide easy to understand coil building video and a beginner guide like mechanical mod safety video and, and stuff like that. I've talked about hybrid safeties before and back on the Facebook page like years ago I did a how to just make normal round wire coil video. But I think since the channel is growing it might be a good idea to revisit that topic. So yeah, I'm going to start putting together a, a easy to understand beginner's guide of like a couple beginner topics um, kind of scrunched down into one video. If there's anything you think I should like specifically talk about, leave it in the comments below. Um, I mean, this is a 150 watt coil building video. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're a more experienced vapor. So like, what are some things that you feel could be helpful to a newer vapor? So uh, Corvette LT1 says, love your vids, man. Hey, thanks, I love Corvettes. I really want to get a Corvette at some point in my life. I, I just, it's, it's just like a guilty pleasure thing that I want. I don't even like domestic cars that much, but I've always wanted like a 2003, like just a yellow Corvette. I'll get the T-top one and I'll wear khaki pants all the time and like, like, like a golf shirt, but I never actually go golfing. And I'm always jingling my keys in my pocket. Like when I have to stand somewhere, I just gotta jiggle my keys. I'm, I'm not saying that's what you do, it's just I, I think about buying a Corvette and like that's the persona I want to take on if I ever do that. So I don't know, maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now, the, the, the videos that you guys see of me, I'll, I'll be wearing a golf shirt and jingling my keys. <laughs> Your mom says, this guy scares me to watch. Well, your mom scares me. <laughs> Captain RDC says, dude, I love your videos. I discovered you yesterday, and I have seen six videos on a day. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like it, and I hope you have Adblock turned off on your browser. <laughs> so, uh, very similar to Owen's comment, uh, Dom2025 writes in and essentially asks, does it matter what coil lead you place in what positive and negative hole. And I, I see this a lot in the comment threads. Uh, it doesn't matter. Technically, electricity wise, it doesn't matter what coil lead you put in what hole as long as one is a positive and the other is the negative. So I think what you guys mean is when you wrap a coil, one is normally higher than the other one. Uh, it depends on the deck where you put those, but it, it performance of the coil wise it really doesn't matter it's kind of preference and then some decks have it like this some decks have it like that and it, it all kind of depends on what you're building on um, a lot of the times people tell you to put the lower lead on the on the outside by the juice well but that kind of makes it weird for the cotton to be whipped properly because then you got to stuff it down really aggressively that is something I'm planning on touching on on my beginner's guide video. I think that will be really helpful because I've, I've got at least a dozen comments about that. So uh, we will we'll, we'll go over that. Never fear. Presley Carpenter says, love your videos, man. I have been vaping for five years now and never found a reviewer like you. Man, keep up the good work, man. I can't wait to see you blow up. P.S. I trust your reviews enough that I'm buying this RDA. Def. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a huge, huge compliment because there's so many great reviewers out there and I, I really work hard to kind of do my own thing. So I, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, congratulations on vaping for five years. That is a long time. And five year ago technology in vaping was definitely not what it is today. And the Kabuki RDA is a awesome, awesome RDA. If you are not familiar, I just did a review of the Kabuki RDA on the past Wednesday show. I'll leave a link for it in the description down below. It's one of my favorite RDAs that I've ever had. All right, let's take one last one here from Max M. Max says, hey Gabe, I got a question. What is your favorite cloud chasing build? I've been experimenting with some builds in my Troll V2 dripper. What's in your opinion do you prefer throwing big clouds? He follows up with another comment saying, I'm going to participate in a cloud chasing competition soon, so I'm looking for as much advice as I can get. Also, you're doing great vids. Keep up the good work. Greetings from Germany. Hey, what's going on, Germany? There was a there's another guy who commented from Germany on my Instagram recently. Shouts out, shouts out as well. Um, yeah. 
yeah, and shouts out to Max, dude. Germany's really far away, and it's it's nice to it's nice to hear from you all the way over there. So the Troll V2 is a decent cloud chasing RDA, as well as the Doge. It's kind of in that same bracket of the RDAs that were designed to be in competition and like the original Twisted Messes and stuff like that. So uh, as far as a build, 20 gauge, 20 gauge all the way, 20 gauge Nichrome. Now depending on your batteries, please use good batteries if you're going to be using 20 gauge Nichrome because it's a very low resistance. Uh, I've done two videos now on cloud chasing builds. I do a 20 gauge that's loosely clapped in with a finer gauge of wire and then I do a 20 gauge split coil but in the case of a actual cloud competition, you're probably not gonna have access to a drill or like a, a vise to put split coils in. I'd recommend just doing a four, five, or six wrap uh, around a three to four millimeter bit. Again, please use battery safety uh, and please, if you're gonna start cloud chasing, you have an ohm reader nearby when you're building so you can check your ohms to make sure that you don't get in a sticky situation while you're up there creating an absolute weather system of clouds. But yeah, greetings, greetings from America all the way over to Germany. Uh, let me know how your cloud comp goes and I hope you win. I've never been in a cloud comp before. I've been to one cloud comp and uh, I got there like two hours late. I, I got there like two hours late and uh, no one, they were like packing things up. So I've never actually been to a cloud comp before. I've never been in a cloud comp before, but I've always wanted to be a part of it. I think that the part where you have to build your coils right there and then use the coils that you have built is just the coolest thing ever. And I would, uh, honestly, I would join a cloud comp just to be like part of a, a bunch of builders hanging out. Like, it's like nobody builds where I live. I wanted to like join a cloud comp circuit to just start building with people. <laughs> so yeah, uh, crazy 150 watt build on the Vupu Drag. Thank you so much to FastTech for sending this along. And yeah, like I said, uh, if you want to see all the ins and outs and my full like formal review, tune back in on Wednesday to check that out. Uh, Black Ops by Budget Vapors. I ate it took me a while to warm up to this juice. Now that I'm warmed up to it, I really enjoy it. I actually have to go to New Jersey tomorrow and I'm gonna be taking this juice and only this juice with me. So if you'd like to get this and many more of my favorite flavors, use the promo code down below. Again, thank you so much to Budget Vapors. You guys are fantastic. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on Monday for Music Video Monday, Wednesday for Review Wednesday, and then Friday for this Friday program. If you'd like to see even more than that, you can follow me on Instagram, at TheRealGabeSmith, and for booking information, send me an email to popculturerecords at gmail.com for booking me to come play music at your event, booking me for some film work, or booking an art show. So yeah, be good to each other out there, try your best every day, and uh, Try to light up the darkness in, in any way you can. It's always, it's, it's small acts of kindness that make the world go round, not big, ridiculous gestures. It's, it's little things that really make the difference and, and can change the world. So wake up tomorrow with a fresh attitude of trying to make a difference. You guys, see you guys next week. I don't know why I keep doing this. Every video, I keep doing this thing where I, where I scroll out of the side. All right, I'll, bye guys.